Okay, in this video we're checking out the Tiny Leader HD, and this is going to be kind of a shortened video because I'm not going to really cover everything in the drone because I already covered pretty much everything already. Um, I did a video, of course, on the original Tiny Leader non-HD version here on the right. All the parts are the same motors and ESC's flight controller. The only difference is they changed the canopy and added the Turtle uh, V2 camera there so that uh, you can get HD video. And so I'm going to mostly talk about those differences uh, versus the original video uh, with the Tiny Leader uh, non-HD version. So I'll link that video down in the description as well. You guys can watch that if you want to see a little more details on specific parts in here. I'm just going to talk about the differences. All the motors, ESCs, and flight controller are the same. Now this, I think, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think this is the second batch where they fixed the problems. This is why um, I've gotten this very late compared to many other reviewers who got the first batch. It had the, um, I guess some of the ECs were, were dying and some of the flight controllers were getting fried. Um, so I haven't had any of those problems, um, fortunately. So I'm thinking this is the second batch and they fixed um, all these issues. Now, um, this this came from Banggood, so it didn't come from Full Speed RC. So uh, this is probably going to be pretty close to what everyone else is going to get right now. Um, it just came in a box exactly as you see here. No battery, no spare props, no instructions. Just uh, this and the box. So you don't get a whole lot. This one here is the Free Sky version, so it just come with a little Full Speed RC branded uh, FreeSky D8 receiver there. And, uh, you know, let me just talk about the the way that they put the turtle camera in here. So they basically shoved it down below there, right above the video transmitter, which is on the very bottom. And I think that the reason that some of the video transmitters or things were frying or something were shorting is maybe because you can see where, like, the video transmitter is basically touching the carbon bottom plate, and there's a little bit of Kapton tape there to prevent shorting, so I'm thinking maybe something like that might have uh, might have uh, slid or moved and then maybe, maybe things got shorted. I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but that is kind of a design issue there. But they have basically the turtle board there, you know, rotated 45 degrees on top of the video transmitter board. It's a very, very tight build here. Uh, the micro SD card slot is over here. Uh, yeah, there you can see it. Behind this, all these wires. And the um, button for starting and stopping recording. Okay, so if I move the receiver out of the way, you can see the button's right there. Now, uh, the camera comes uh, defaulted out of the box to not record when you power on. And I like actually like that feature, so I turned it on. Uh, the little dongle for the OST cable is right here where you plug in the controller board. But again, they did not include this in the second batch. It wasn't included in the first batch. And the board you need is this thing here. If you have other Cadex cameras, you're going to most likely have this board and the wire that's going to plug into the dongle there. And that's what you're going to need to change the camera settings. That's what I, I use this to change the camera settings from, um, yeah, well actually just to turn on the auto record setting. Um, also changed a few of the camera settings to ones I like in terms of sharpness and saturation because the Default out of the camera is too sharp and too saturated, so I turn those down. But yeah, um, if you don't have another Cadex camera, you're going to have to find a friend or something to do that. Um, give you that controller board so you can change those settings if you want to turn on auto record on power on. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to get in here with some sort of a tool and press that button to start and stop your video recordings because it won't auto record out of the box unless you change those settings. Now because of the way that they've uh, stacked this with the turtle camera, the board right there, they moved the flight controller board and ESC board up. And so this video transmitter antenna is now flopping about in between the ducts here on the side. So you do get some kind of weird on certain angles, uh, a lot of breakup on the reception. I would have liked to have seen some sort of other mechanism, maybe move the antenna up here, zip tie it to like some kind of a hook or something here out the top. That would have been nice, and then, and then the receiver antenna is kind of doing the same thing as before. Coming up the side, at the bottom, I believe the original kind of has the same idea, like right here. You can see it's doing the, coming off the side. That's okay. Um, 
I, I wouldn't fly too far away with this anyway. It's just a 2S, uh, 3S whoop. So um, I would say your range is probably limited to, I would say 100, 200 meters at the most. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend flying too far away. There is RSSI that comes out of the receiver as well. Now with the uh, turtle board in there and the turtle camera or the camera sensor board, it does it is heavier. So let's give you the weight difference between the original and the HD version. So I flew it on 2S and I'll show you the battery here in a second. It's coming in at 55 and 0.3 grams for the HD version and the regular version is 46.3 grams. So it uh, looks like it's about nine. Yeah, it's about nine grams heavier. It does make a pretty big difference. So you think about nine grams into 46. It's, you know, um, it's, it's pretty significant. It's like 20% of the weight, additional weight for the uh, HD version. And you do feel that. Um, now I just flew it around on this uh, GNB uh, 300 milliamp hour high volt uh, 2S LiPo. And it fits perfectly in the tray here. If you use the uh, 3S LiPo, that's a, also it's like a GNB prototype, um, you do you get a little bit more performance. It, obviously it's spinning the same uh, motors at a higher KV, so the motors are spinning faster, higher RPM. But the top end of the RPM isn't all that, or I'm sorry, the top end of the throttle isn't all that useful. You don't really get that much more power. And you get a much, much shorter flight time. So I'm getting probably three and a half minutes on this 300 milliamp hour LiPo. And I'm, I'm getting like like a minute and a half on uh, the the 3S version of this LiPo. So uh, I, you know, I, and I, it may be that the batteries I have aren't very good because they are prototypes. So I'm not 100% sure on that. So I might get some more of those and more production versions of those later. And we'll see if performance or, better, or flight time is better. But yeah, um, I would recommend just sticking to 2S. You can do some flips and rolls with it, but yeah, it's not really meant for, um, like I would say, like, uh, like acro freestyle type flying. Uh, it's possible, uh, but yeah, it doesn't really feel that great because it, it just does feel heavy in the air. Now the uh, tune then that comes on here, the pit tune that comes on here is okay. I mean, it doesn't have, it doesn't suffer from a lot of vibrations or oscillations. Um, but it does feel, especially on the roll axis, it does just feel very unresponsive or kind of loose to me. Um, now I'm not particularly a fan of the, this pit tune on here. Uh, obviously, you know, it's very subjective. It flies, but I think that I would tune it differently. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't, it just, just feels like it's very sluggish on the roll axis to me on this tune. Pitch seems fine. Uh, I, I think you could probably get used to it. Obviously, um, I'm going to retune this. I just flew this for the review, the way it came out of the box, because it, you know they did take the time to do a pit tune on this. But I think it's a tune that they prefer, or those pilots that they have tested this prefer this this kind of a tune. But for me, I'm not that big of a fan of the tune that came out of the box on this one. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the Jello in the HD video on here. Um, this pod is a little loose. I mean. It does move around here because you just have one point of uh, secure. It's secured down here on this one point over here on this little standoff in the back, and one screw here in the front there, and that is it. That's all told. That's all holding the camera in place. So it does move around a little bit. Uh, also, uh, the lighting conditions were overcast, so um, it's uh, not too bright. And even with those conditions, there was a you know fair amount of jello you'll see in the HD video, which means that when you fly this in sunny conditions outside, if you if you fly this on a bright sunny day with no clouds in the middle of the day, uh, you're going to see um, more jello than you do in low light conditions. That's how it is with these uh, CMOS HD cameras. So yeah, um, this is uh, this was expected. I, I I saw some other reviews from other people, and they had jello in their video. Uh, I think it has to do with the fact that it's just not that well secured. Um, there may be ways to improve that. I don't know, maybe use some rubber bands or zip ties or something to hold it down a little bit better. Uh, so it's not uh, able to move around so much. Because this, you know, this whole thing is very flexible and it'll vibrate. And any small amount of vibration is going to get into the camera and cause some jello in the video. But that being said, given the weight and everything of this, I can't really complain too much. Obviously, you know, I have that prototype um, of the Mobula 7 HD that you saw earlier. 
they're gonna obviously, you know, and that had jello, so they're gonna be fixing their canopy to try and minimize the jello that I got, even though some of the people didn't get jello. So obviously, I think it has to do with the camera mounting and how well it's able to isolate vibration from the rest of the craft, the motors and props. And, uh, you know, we'll see how, uh, when the Mobile, Mobile 7 HD comes out, uh, when I get the final version of that, we'll see if uh, they've solved the Jello mystery uh, on these little tiny HD whoops. Anyway guys, yeah, that's about it for this video. I'm going to show you some flight footage from this. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this, and if you have this, uh, if you have any issues or problems, yeah, let, you know, put, uh, put some comments down below. Really interested in hearing what you guys uh, have experienced with this one. Because I know there's been a wide variety of experiences out there. Some good, some bad. Um, this obviously was one of the first HD whoops that have come out. And, you know, whenever, whenever you have something brand new like this, uh, you're always going to have some growing pains, some issues. So, um, yeah, hopefully the second batch here is a better product. And this one here from Banggood seems to be okay. It's just that, you know, it's not perfect. I think the things still can be improved, but, you know, we'll see if they can maybe make some changes to this pod in a future design revision to get rid of the jello. Hopefully, we'll see, but yeah, that's where things stand right now, and I'll go ahead and show you some flight footage, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.